This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Hey guys, we're here at Disneyland, the spookiest place on earth, to celebrate Bob Showine. Let's kick things off with Pixar's homage to Dia de los Muertos, Coco. But wait, Bob Show, you might be saying, didn't you just do a Pixar movie in your last review? Yes, I did, but screw it. I spend so much of my time watching garbage, I think I deserve to watch some good movies now and then. Our movie begins with our main character, Miguel, narrating a little backstory about how his great-great-grandfather walked out on his family to pursue a career in music. His great-great-grandmother turned her back on all things musical and made sure her family would be successful without him in their shoemaking business. Speaking of music, I once again need to give some major props right off the bat to the film's composer, Michael Giacchino. This guy is not known for blending traditional orchestrations with mariachi music, but he did it here flawlessly. Music had torn her family apart. But shoes held them all together. You see, that woman was my great-great-grandmother, Mama Imelda. She died way before I was born. But my family still tells her story every year on Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. Miguel spends most of his time with his great-grandmother, Coco, who has a hard time remembering things. He's somewhat estranged from the rest of his family, mostly because of their intolerance towards music. No music! No music! No music! And four minutes in, hi Pizza Planet Truck! Oh no, it's the Pixar Theory. It's all connected. Go in in the car. Oh, and look at the background there. Knock off Pixar pinatas. We're in Mexico, alright. Pixar Theory! Didn't I tell you to go wait in the car? I'll be good. While the rest of his family is perfectly fine with hating music, Miguel can't help but love it. And who else to nurture that love than Mexico's most famous musician, Ernesto de la Cruz. Seriously, first we got Remy watching old footage of Chef Gusteau and Ratatouille, now Miguel is watching De La Cruz. I guarantee this is pretty much every animator at Pixar, watching old Disney films and archival footage of Disney himself, and they're saying to themselves, yeah, that's what I want to do. Señor De La Cruz, what did it take for you to seize your moment? I had to have faith in my dream. No one was going to hand it to me. It was up to me to reach for that dream, grab it tight, and make it come true. Miguel decides to seize his moment and play in the upcoming De La De Los Muertos talent show, which is bolstered by his accidentally discovering that, holy crap, De La Cruz is his great-great-grandfather. Of course, this goes over with his family like a lead balloon, but he still needs to seize his moment, so where is he going to get a guitar to do it? He breaks into the tomb of De La Cruz and steals his guitar. Borrowed. Borrowed without permission. Yeah, he justifies it by saying that his great-great-grandfather would be cool with him borrowing it, but still, grave robbing! That'll solve your problems! Seriously, none of these other contestants could let him borrow one of their guitars for a few minutes? Gracias, carajos. Unfortunately, stealing this guitar has somehow made Miguel cross over to the other side. The only people who can see him are the dead who have come to visit their living relatives. It isn't long before he bumps into his own ancestors, who he can recognize despite their not having any flesh on their bones. 
Man, how many countless hours did it take for these character designers to figure out the tiny details to make these dead people not look terrifying? They still have their eyes, despite the rest of their bodies having rotted away, and they're set in expressive eye sockets, a la Jack Skellington. Their mandibles flex and mold over their teeth to give the illusion of a complete face instead of just being a decaying skull. They have thick, rounded fingertips so they actually look like fingers instead of looking like pointed claws. It was funny seeing the living in Tim Burton's Corpse Bride somehow recognizing their dead relatives after first being terrified of them. But there's nothing to be afraid of here. It's just your family who you haven't seen in a long time. While the rest of Miguel's ancestors were able to visit the land of the living just fine, his great-great-grandmother, Mama Imelda, is stuck on the other side. They figure that Miguel, being in the state that he's in, might have something to do with it, so they take him to the land of the dead to get this all squared away. And, of course, they had to make the gates to the other world look like the gates of Disneyland. Cute. As it turns out, you're only allowed to cross into the land of the living if your family puts up your photo on their ofrenda. No photo, no entry. You know what? I'm just gonna zip right over. You wouldn't even know I'm gone! <laughs> I can make a joke about border security, but you're already thinking it, so I don't have to. Let's move on. Next! Your photos are your dentist, Sofrenda. Enjoy your visit. Gracias. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Pixar's shortest John Ratzenberger role to date. They find Imelda having trouble with customs, since Miguel took her photo from his ofrenda and didn't put it back. It's also explained that since Miguel stole from the dead on a day you're supposed to give to the dead, he's cursed to the other side until he can get his family's blessing. Imelda can give it to him on the sole condition that he give up music forever, but since he can't, he goes out to seek De La Cruz, his only other family member who can give him this blessing who wouldn't demand he give up music. He also has until sunrise to do it, or else he'll be cursed forever. What happens at sunrise? Híjole! Your hand! Ah! Most morbid ticking clock ever. He meets this other skeleton named Hector, who is notorious for trying to cross the bridge despite not having anyone put up his photo. Apparently he knows De La Cruz, and he promises he'll get Miguel to him if he puts up his photo so he can cross. I need my spirit guide, Pepita. <laughs> Who has that pedal Miguel touched? <laughs> that nice alebrique. <laughs> After putting Miguel in Boneface, they go on a bunch of misadventures until they meet De La Cruz himself. He seems like a perfectly great guy, which means he's the twist villain, who apparently only became famous because he stole all of the songs from Hector, who he also killed when he tried to quit touring with him and see his family. Security! Take care of Miguel. He'll be extending his stay. What? But I'm your family! And Hector was my best friend. Success doesn't come for free, Miguel. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes to seize your moment. I know you understand. After Miguel and Hector are thrown out to be forgotten, Hector laments about how he'll never be able to see his daughter Coco again. That's right. It turns out that Hector is really Miguel's great-great-grandfather. And one tear-jerking flashback sequence later, Imelda's spirit animal finds them, and they need to get Hector's photo back from De La Cruz so Miguel can put it on their ofrenda, because if you're forgotten in the living world, you cease to exist in the Land of the Dead. They have a little chase that bleeds over into De La Cruz's Day of the Dead concert. I gotta reference the Corpse Bride again. This scene would be a lot shorter if they dealt with De La Cruz the same way that Tim Burton's dead people dealt with murderers. During the fight for Hector's photo, De La Cruz ruins his precious reputation in one fell swoop. Ernesto, stop! 
go. Leave the boy alone. I've worked too hard, Hector. Too hard to let him destroy everything. He's a living child, Ernesto. He's a threat. threat. You think I let him go back to the land of the living with your photo? To keep your memory alive? No. You're a coward! I am Ernesto de la Cruz, the greatest musician of all time. Hector's the real musician. You're just the guy who murdered him and stole his soul. Murdered? I am the one who's willing to do what it takes to seize my moment. Whatever it takes. I'll kidnap a thousand children before I let this company die. De la Cruz throws Miguel to his doom, but of course he's saved at the very last second. Who saw that one coming? Miguel loses the photo. His family sends him back with their blessing as Hector is on the verge of being forgotten. But Miguel ensures that he isn't forgotten after he has this little moment with his Mama Coco. Mama Coco? Your papa? He wanted you to have this. <gasps> Mama, wait. Remember me. Though I have to say goodbye, remember me. Don't let it make you cry. For even Look. if I'm far away, I hold you in my heart. I sing a secret song to you each night we are apart. Remember. Me, though I have to travel far, remember me. Each time you hear a sad guitar, know that I'm with you the only way that I can be. Until you're in my arms again. Suddenly, I can't help but remember how my Nana often wore that same dress that Coco's wearing. So Coco remembers her father and starts telling stories about him. His memory is forever enshrined on their ofrenda, and as the national icon that he should have been all along, he gets to visit his family every Dia de los Muertos, along with his reunited... uh... elderly little girl. And they all lived, and died, happily and musically forever after. <laughs> So that was Coco, and it's beautiful. I'm sorry for rushing through this review, but really, it's hard to review a movie like this beyond it's really good, you should go watch it right now. The animation is stunning, the art direction is breathtaking, the music is entrancing, and if you have or had a close relationship with your grandmother, you're gonna end up crying. It's also one of those movies where you sit back and think, wow, these guys really did their research in creating this world. They also suggest in the end credits that you visit your local library if you want to learn more about Dia de los Muertos. It'd be too easy to say, go to www.mexicaninfo.com or something, but no, go to your library. They're still a thing. Thank you all for joining me on this first installment of Bob Show Mean. Be sure to tune in next time when we'll visit another town full of walking corpses. See you later. Remember me, though I have to say goodbye. Remember me, don't let it make you cry For even if I'm far away, I hold you in my heart I sing a secret song to you, each night that we are apart Remember me, though I have to travel far Remember me Each time you hear a sad guitar Know that I'm with you the only way that I can be Until you're in my arms again Remember me
recuérdame Hoy tengo que ir mi amor Recuérdame No llores por favor Te llevo en mi corazón Y cerca me tendrás A solas yo te cantaré Soñando en regresar Recuérdame Aunque tenga que emigrar Recuérdame Si mi guitarra oyes llorar Ella con su triste canto te acompañará Hasta que en mis brazos estés Recuérdame Muchas gracias Subscribe, like, follow.